Hi, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and today, this is the end of January, and I am going to be pruning my Japanese maples. I have several that I started from seed, and they're just, um, I wouldn't say generic, but they're just a wide range of colors and shapes. They were taken from seeds, or the seeds were from a local winery that has all kinds of Japanese maples on the property. So what came up was a variety of different types of trees. Um, and I like to shape them. They're not naturally the ones that drape. And I want to create a draping effect or interesting trunk structure with them. And so I'm going to show you how on some of my Japanese maples, I'm just cleaning them up for the season. And then others, I'm going to show you how I shape them using uh, pantyhose strips and uh, bowing or bending the limbs so that they train them in a certain direction. So one thing I want to tell you, I am no expert in pruning Japanese maples. I'm just showing you what I do with mine and how and why I do certain things. Okay, let's get to pruning. I wanted to start down here with this big growth that's going that direction. And in years past, that hasn't bothered me, but I'm wanting to more formulate this tree here, and this needs to go. So ideally, I would have a pole, or not a pole saw, but a pruning saw, but I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my large loppers, and I'm just gonna take that off. Now you notice this kind of leans, Later on, I will repot this and I will bring it more upright. But for now, I'm fine with it the way it is. So I'm going to move the camera up so you can see how else I'm going to clean up this. But right here is some pieces that are low down that I don't necessarily want on here. So I'm just going to take those off right back to the trunk. And this one too. So now why I'm doing this now is we're getting warmer temperatures and it's going to start budding very, very soon. And I, I want to get this while it's still dormant. So I'm just cleaning up all these little pieces down here below this Y. I want this all to be clean trunk with no growth on it coming out from this area. And now I'm going to find first anything dead that's obviously dead and or crossing through the middle. Now, like this is growing towards this one here. Now I have debated taking part of this out, but I don't think so. I think this is very good. And you see how these two are crossing? That is why I was kind of thinking of taking one of them out so I will think about that later. Right now, I'm finding anything that's coming into the center because I want to keep the center open. And just, and here's a dead one over here. Now, the beauty of Japanese maples is not only their leaves, but also the structure, the framework that Will, can be shown off once it's been developed. Now this over here, this is obviously dead, so that can come off. Sometimes it can look dead and not be dead. I kind of like where that's coming off there, so I will preserve that. This is coming into the center. Remember, I want the center kind of open. See, this is coming over across over this, and I want that out. Now play it by ear. Kind of visualize what you want the end result to look like. And then turn it, walk around your tree. I have it up against a wall so you can see it better. Um, but I will turn this and then see what else I may need to take out. And what may cross, this will cross over in front of that one. This is crossing on that one. 
and just lighten up some of the limbs. This is crossing over on that one. Like I said, these two are kind of crossing, so I'm not sure which direction I want this to go. I may take it down to here, and then this will go that way, and this will still be open. And I think I'm going to do that. Let me make sure that part's in the camera. So, you see where those two are crossing there? Now, I can take it down to here, and this has branch coming out this way. And then that will keep this center part open, and this will fill in up here while that goes that direction. Now, like I said, this one isn't going to get the bowing treatment like the others are going to get. And that one's crossing over that one right there. So that one needs to go to keep it more open. This one's coming back towards the inside. Now this will all fill in with leaves. And so this helps also when you take out anything growing towards the center um, for good <clears throat> air circulation and good health. Let's see. I'm thinking I'm liking that for now. I'm going to leave this one, walk away, and um, take a look at it again later when I can walk around it and see what kind of structure I have. Now that one, that tree, is this tree is probably about 15 years old, and <clears throat> I've just potted it up into larger pots over the seasons. Okay, I'm going to show you one that I'm trying to train. I'm trying to find good lighting out here for you. So here's one that I want to train. So first of all, I want to take away all these lower branches that are at the base because I want it to have a definite trunk. And taking these off will help it to put the juice into these other branches. So I'm going to decide if I want to keep this one and have it bowing down a little bit. And that one might make a good one to bow down. I'll cut it back a little bit. And then I will show you how I cut it down. Now this is a lone branch on this side. There's one that can come over there so it has good balance. But what I do to make them have some bowing structure or shape is I will take it and I will tie it down like this. And after a while, maybe a year, it will maintain that structure. And then I can do it up later. So it gives it kind of a wavy look there. So let's see what's coming out here. Well, I'll just leave one of these coming out here. Now there's a bunch right here. And I don't know. See, they're going to cross. So I've got this part going here. So I think I'll take this part out and then save this part here. And I can bow that one. I can tie that one to give it a draping shape. And there's probably someone out there going, no, you don't do it like that. I have, and I've gotten some pretty interesting shapes. And I don't want to tie it too snugly because I don't want to snap it. And you can release them sooner rather than later, like in six months, and um, then it will, won't will be quite as dramatic as pulling it back. It'll spring back a little bit. So I'll tie that. Now at first, these don't look that pretty as far as being all tied up. Now this one is going to cross. Now I like this one has many branches coming 
all different directions. And that is from prior pruning. I directed that. Now this one over here is dead. You can tell by the brown of it and it's kind of crispy feeling. So this one I want to give it some shape so I will tie that one as well. I'm having to go get my ties over there because my tabletop is wet from the frost, the morning frost. It's supposed to be get into the mid 50s today. Now that's bowing it a little too far so I'm going to tie it down to this one. Like I said, it won't keep as dr <clears throat> the dramatic drape. It will pop back up somewhat. So um, don't be afraid to tie them. I need both hands better. Dry try to tie them very dramatically. Okay, this one, I want this one to drape too. Okay, let's make this one drape too. Excuse that dog barking. I have a neighborhood dog that just wants to bark and bark. This one's a little tougher. So I'm going to have to come down lower and keep a good hold on my tie, or it's going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to have to really tie this one snugly. Now, like I said, this may look pretty ugly right now, but it does give the trees an interesting shape. And I'll bring one over that's been shaped. Uh, let's see if I've got more than one already. So you can see how it comes out. Okay, that one, I will tie that one too. Some of these other branches can kind of come out like this one here, this little one. And that will keep this more open. And this one here probably wouldn't hurt to bring that one out too. Because then you keep this structure open and interesting to look at. Okay, pull this one down. I'm sure someone's out there telling me or thinking she's torturing these trees. But I'm just shaping it. Let's see, that's crossing over, so that can come out. Get a good grip on it. These things will be whacking you in the face. I know, are you bored yet? I might speed this up. Those actually could be tied down together. I've actually done this before, so if you think I'm crazy, think again. Okay, so that one's ready to go. Some of them, I'll nip them back a little bit. Okay, so that will take the shape so that it is a more of a draping Japanese maple than just an upright. That one's small enough. <coughs> I don't need to train it right now. <coughs> and I'll show you one I've done <coughs> in the past. Yeah. So here's one that's been trained and when it's fully leafed out it's really pretty because it's draping down. You see how it's very open and right here is a spot where a major um, limb or the main stem trunk busted in the snow um, of a heavy snow because when you put it down like this and it catches the snow especially if we get an early snow when it still has leaves um, then it can cause damage. So a lot of times I'll put many of my Japanese maples that have been trained this way underneath my deck so you know it's still cold and gets moisture but it um, protects it from the heavy weight of the snow. 
So this one needs to be cleaned up a little bit. It's got some dead limbs. And what have you. And that just forces it to put energy into new growth. And I don't have any crossing. That goes in there. And that's a dead limb down here. And it's really pretty. Most of it's going that direction because this is sits up against a wall in the summer. Um, so if I wanted to change that, I can let some of this grow and not put up against a wall and, and have that come out this direction and make it more even all the way around and trim some of these back further to push more of the growth there. So that is basically how I prune my Japanese maples and shape them if I want them to have more of a draping shape. Um, some I leave more upright and I like that where I, the places I put them, that's what I need in those spots. And one thing is nice with getting, growing them from seeds is the variety of colors. It can really be surprising from the same batch of seeds. You can get oranges, you can get all green, you can get um, golden yellows and some reds. Uh, like the large tree that I pruned first, that stays red all summer. It comes on red, the leaves stay red all summer. And this one is a green. It stays a real pretty green, real fine lace leaf. And one of these days I'm going to learn how to graft. So I can graft one of these onto some, maybe a plainer looking start that I have and um, have another one like this. But that's a future task. And there you have it, pruning Japanese maple by a novice. And I grow them. I've grown them successfully for 20 years and have had no issues other than if a heavy snow comes and breaks one. I'll show you another one that I had the same issue with. This one. Had the same thing and um, you notice how it broke off right here this one had a nice pretty this was the leader and so I just am trying to train it this direction and oh, it looks like I need that to be trimmed off but so it was not the end of the world because it broke off but so this is this tree this one I will trim these down here off down here at the base because I want it to have a trunk, a definite trunk, and not have all that leafy growth out there. And that'll shoot more energy up to this part. So I really like the shape of this one, um, the way it's going. This fills in a little bit here with these branches and is just, it has a pretty structure already. Very interesting. So even in the winter, it just looks nice. Okay, there you have it simple Japanese maple pruning that the experts probably are horrified by, but I'll see you in the next video.